From the American Metal Roof Studios, your home for the biggest newsmakers is here on Michigan's Morning Show with Michael Patrick Shields. Michael Patrick Shields is on the air. Good morning, world. Good morning, Michigan. A very pleasant Thursday to you. It's Michael Patrick Shields, heard all across the state of Michigan and broadcasting from the American Metal Roof Studio in the Gillespie Group Stadium District that is in the capital city of Michigan here in the Lansing area. Gary Austin is the anchorman. He is with us this morning, too. Good morning, Gary. Well, good morning, Michael Patrick. Sad news. Jimmy Northrup. I mean, what a great ball player. All those years, Tigers, later Baltimore. Um, passing away at the age of 71 this week. He was at an Alzheimer's facility in Grand Blanc. That's really just sad news. Silver, uh, Gray Fox is what they yeah, called Both, him, actually, Silver and Gray. He was called both. How do you get to be both Silver and Gray? <laughs> he <laughs> hit the triple in Game 7 of the 68 World Series, right, that drove in he the did. winning run? Yep, it was in the seventh inning off Bob Gibson, and both Gibson and L- Mickey Lolich, they were dueling. You know, Lolich coming into that game um, had won two games in that series. Bob Gibson, yeah. also 2-0. and yeah. So this was at the big showdown, and uh, Northrop got that hit. And, you know, Kurt Flood, um, gold glove center fielder, he took two steps in and then went back, had a break <laughs> back. You know, they gave Northrop a triple on that. Some said it could have been an error because of the ball was misjudged. Uh, However, some say Flood didn't misjudge it. He just got a bad break on the crack of the sure. bat. So I, I guess, you know, it's an age-old, it's, <laughs> the argument still continues. I mean, did Flood misjudge it? Some say yes, some say no. But in any event, when the smoke cleared, there was Jimmy Northrup standing on third base and great shot of Norman Cash, you know, clapping his hands, and he crossed home plate. And uh, that proved to be the winning hit. Let's make that our grand moment of the day, brought to you by Grand Hotel. You can celebrate in grand style by calling 1-800-33-GRAND or go to grandhotel.com and have a grand vacation. The 68 World Series victory by the <clears throat> Tigers, courtesy of the now late Silver Fox. He also did some television broadcasting for the Tigers for a while, too, there. He did. Pro-Am Sports. Remember that? I sure do. Long, long. You know, that's when that was when, when this whole satellite thing was just taken off. And I was in Topeka, Kansas at the time. I remember one of my uh, announcing buddies there, the station that I worked at, got this big old satellite dish. And I said, what in the world is that thing? <laughs> and this was in 1984. And I said, holy smokes, um, Rick, do you, mind, do you think your wife would mind... If I hung out and watched some Tiger games, you know, 84 was the big year, you know, for the Tigers. You know, they won the series that year, and they had that great run. And uh, There this, you this, were. This was just great. You know, and, and this, was, this was the one chance that I could actually see here I am, you know, in, in, in faraway Kansas, and I could watch all these Tiger games on television. It was like a miracle, a dream come true. Well, let us take you back to the dream come true right. for the Detroit Tigers in 1968. Here was the big hit by Jim Northrup. Northrup hits the ball. To all fields. Fly ball, flood. Hey, almost flood. He misjudges it over his head. Two runs are going to score. Yeah, that was Harry Carey doing the broadcast on television for NBC that year. Uh, Ernie Harwell uh, did the games on radio. He says it right there. He misjudged the ball. I mean, that was his knee-jerk reaction. He did. If you watch it, though, he took, you know, Kurt Flood, you can count him, two steps in, then he broke back. And as I was watching watching it this morning on on YouTube, the the video is there. And as I'm watching that, I'm thinking, okay, if Flood doesn't take those two steps in, if he breaks back with a crack of the bat, you know, you got to figure... You know, St. Louis, you know, the, it, you know it, it's a deep part of center field. I mean, straightaway center is pretty much where Northrop hit the ball. Um, I'm thinking, gee, what do you, could, he have gate, could he have caught up to the ball? And you got to figure with flood speed, if he didn't take those two steps in, he probably would have caught it. And then who knows <laughs> what history would have, would have uh, what, what path that game would have taken then. Because, you know, Gibson and Lolich, I mean, the game was scoreless in the seventh inning. I mean, that was the first run to cross the plate. And in 1968, they called it the year of the pitcher, and for good reason, too. You know, they, they had that, that uh, the mound was higher that year. In 69, they lowered it, but they had that high mound, and that just gave the pitchers an incredible advantage, you know, just looking down on the batter perched on, on top of that high hill. So You know, you're a baseball expert. Oh, well, I don't know about that. So is Rich Kincaid. He's on the other end of our line right now, the sports broadcaster and uh, blogger and author and uh, friend of the program, too. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Michael Patrick. Well, what was your immediate, is that what you pictured, too, when you heard the sad news about Jim Northrup? Ah, uh, just sad. Uh, it just uh, struck me suddenly. I, I mean, I knew he was uh, 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 
in a nursing home and, and had been yeah. for a, a couple of months. But I just, uh, it just, uh, you know, well, anytime this happens, you know, it strikes you kind of suddenly. But, you know, the uh, the 68 Tigers to me were not just a team I read about in a book. I mean, that was my favorite team when I was a little boy growing up. I probably went to 15 or 20 games that year. And I always associate uh, Jim Northup with the Grand Slam home run. He had a month in, uh, actually a week in June of 68 where he hit three grand slams and uh, he had two in one game and of course he hit another one in the world series so you always associate uh, number five with the uh, the grand slam he was called the silver fox and uh, i got to know him uh, later in life when he was a broadcaster for the tigers and yeah. he was always very i wouldn't say outspoken but he was blunt you know he didn't mince any words <laughs> and i always uh, i always uh, liked that about him and i think that's one of the reasons that uh, he was uh, fired by the tigers and replaced by uh, by Jim Price. They didn't want somebody who was, uh, you know, as blunt as that. Yeah, that's right. Right about the time that broadcasting was becoming more like shilling than it was actually calling the game. Exactly, yeah. And when when somebody make a dumb play, North, North would say, what a dumb play. And, uh, you know, so. <laughs> and the other thing about uh, Jim, he was very, you know, ex- extremely honest guy. And, uh, and he uh, uh, was actually bitter about... Uh, uh, the way the Tigers treated him in terms of his salary while he was a player. I mean, there was no free agency back in the 1960s. There was no uh, players union. And uh, he said that uh, he'd go in to see Jim Campbell every year about his contract, and Campbell slide across the, dre- the uh, desk and say, take it or leave it. And Jim said the most he, uh, he ever made was uh, like $42,000. Is that you see? He was used to making thirty or $35,000. And, uh, of course, you know, today... The Tigers' right fielder you know, is going to make anywhere from six to ten million dollars a year. Jim Northup says over the course of his entire career, he thinks he made approximately two hundred fifty thousand dollars. He was a sociable guy too, uh, as you talk about when he was a broadcaster. He would turn up at events and that sort of thing. I, I only met him in passing a couple of times when I was working for JP, but you were around him a lot, and, and uh, he, he was at that point though pretty friendly fellow, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No question about it. Uh, you know, and then really a guy that uh, felt uh, lucky. Uh, 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 that, you know, he, he had the life uh, that uh, that he had. Uh, he, he would tell you that, uh, uh, you know, all the little kids growing up playing baseball, you know, and he made it to the major leagues, and he said that uh, uh, his ability was a gift from God. He said that's the, the only way to explain it, you know, with all... You know, with, with, with so many people trying to make it to the big leagues, and, and there he is, and he uh, he did make it. You know, and and then that '68 team, that was a that was a fun bunch. That was a, a close knit group of guys, and uh, you know, Jimmy Northup and, uh, and and Norm Cash, Dick McCullough, Bill Freehan, all those guys, and uh, you know, they've 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 uh, certainly done a good job of uh, uh, staying in touch with one another over the years. And uh, it's as we say, it's just it's sad to to, to lose another one. Let's hope he gets the ultimate gift from God now that he's uh, left this veil of tears. And we thank you very much for putting a smile on our face with some of those great memories this morning, Rich. Appreciate it. Thank thank you, Michael Patrick. Rich Kincaid, the author of uh, Gods of Olympia Stadium. His blog is everybodywantstoreadmyblog.com. He covers the Tigers for us uh, and the passing of Jim Northrup. Uh, Thank you, too, to Gary Austin, live from the AmericanMetalRoofs.com studio. Save up to 50% on your energy bills with an energy audit from AmericanMetalRoofs.com. And we're back in a flash. It's Michael Patrick Shields, Michigan's Morning Show.